welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new and have never been to my channel, take a look around. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. So I've been wanting to make this video for a little while now because I've been seeing all of this information on the coronavirus and actually I've been seeing some information that's quite disturbing about the virus as well. And I know that several of my subscribers are all around the world um, and you are in probably countries that have had confirmed cases of the coronavirus, like myself being here in the United States. So the time is now, what better time than the present to make this particular video? So that is what this video is gonna be about. I'm gonna give you some brief information on the coronavirus. I'm gonna give you my opinion on um, whether this whole panic is dumb or actually valid and um, I'm gonna give you some tips that you and your family actually can use to help reduce your risk of obtaining and acquiring this virus so with respect to the coronavirus um, I'm sure many of you have already heard of this but it is a group it's a subset of viruses um, more specifically an RNA virus that replicates through the use of mRNA and these particular subset of viruses uh, there are Vi coronaviruses that affect humans and there are coronaviruses that affect animals. So more notably, there have been coronavirus uh, outbreaks in the past, the most notable one being SARS back in the early 2000s, which claimed over 8,000 lives. And this particular virus, which has been called COVID-19 because it was started in 2019 and it's more notably being called um, today as of now SARS-CoV-2, which stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. Um, this particular virus has actually claimed over 3,000 lives and it's in several different countries. So it is important for us to be aware of the virus, what we're dealing with, and um, so that we can actually prepare ourselves With respect to how the symptoms of the coronavirus might present themselves, uh, it is a respiratory virus. It's a respiratory tract infection. So with that being said, you're gonna have respiratory symptoms, right? So you're gonna have like your cough and dyspnea, similar to that of like a pneumonia. You're also gonna have a fever. And so uh, that is the typical, I guess you can say, symptoms that you would see. But there are also other symptoms that can present, such as GI symptoms, which will be like your nausea and your diarrhea and vomiting. And sometimes you may have no symptoms at all. And so with all of this wide array of you know, severe symptoms of pneumonia to no symptoms at all, how, uh, how do we know if we have the virus, if we've been in contact with somebody with the virus, like what that is what's causing this fear and this panic, right? This the uncertainty of it all. And with that, I I can understand. I understand you guys. I am with you. I get that the fear of the unknown um, is kind of like really dampening to your spirit. But I have to tell you guys, like as a healthcare professional and just as somebody that has been, has seen some of these things happen like in the past with respect to just how we, per, like how the precautions that we put in place to ensure that we're not acquiring these viruses and other diseases that are airborne diseases, it's important for us to be calm about it. And I know that, you know, it's like, girl, like, come on, what are you talking about? Be calm. But no, honestly, like it's necessary for us to actually like take a, a level-headed mind about it and go, at, go ahead and do our due diligence in terms of research, take into consideration the various different precautions being put in place and the suggestions that like the CDC and the WHO are telling us to put into place and use those, core, those cautions that are put as opposed to going out there and doing some of the ridiculous things that I've seen happen. Meanwhile, the panic of purchasing toilet paper has reached a new low. Video has emerged of an alarming scene in a Sydney supermarket of two women coming to blows in an argument over the right to buy multiple packets of toilet tissue. As the brawl threatened to escalate, the store manager stepped in to try to restore law and order. I just want one pack. No, not one pack. What's the limit? As a minute, guys, guys, I need everyone to back off right now. No, 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 no. 
Now, granted, yes, they were hoarding or getting a bunch of toilet paper. We don't know like the full story. We didn't get to see like the start of this to the end of it happening, but it was crazy. There are three women fighting over toilet paper in the grocery store. And and that is that is where this whole healthy fear and panic turns into hysteria and ridiculousness and foolishness. I recently went to my local Safeway uh, to get some signature hand sanitizer that I won in the Monopoly game that they were doing. And the manager told me that they didn't have any. And I'm like, well, why are you guys like sell, like why are you guys promoting like this free hand sanitizer if you don't have any? And he was like, well, we actually had a lot, but it was all stolen two days ago. And I'm like, what? Like, what is going on? And this, these are the things that are happening. Um, masks, you know, masks are being stolen from hospitals. Why are we doing this? Like when you have this fear and it turns into panic um, and it causes you to do criminal things, that's where I have to be like draw the line. Like there is a healthy fear, but if this fear is causing you to act out of character or I mean, bring out a part of your character that maybe you didn't know was there or was hidden and you're now being a criminal, then that's when you need to like take a step back and realize, okay, like what do I need to do? So currently you know that there is no treatment for this uh, particular outbreak of coronavirus. They're working on it, but that is gonna take time. So with that being said, there are things that you can do and your family can do to help reduce your risk of acquiring the virus and also of spreading the virus if you know um, you know somebody that is actually a confirmed case uh, or has a confirmed case. So with respect to that, the first thing that you can do um, is like just common sense stuff, which is don't do unnecessary travel, right? So if you don't have to travel out of, outside of the country, if you don't have to um, travel outside of your state, especially to areas that you know have confirmed cases of the coronavirus, then don't do it. Um, th th like that goes without saying, that's like simple stuff. Don't make a necessary travel because you're putting yourself in unnecessary danger. So therefore, it's smart for you to either postpone your trip or you know cancel that trip so that you can actually make a more informed decision on as the developments of this particular virus uh, comes out into play. Now with that being said, you can also do things like practicing good hand hygiene. So wash your hands, right? About like 20 to 30 seconds. And that is exactly like the minimum amount of time that you should be washing your hands for. At minimum 30 seconds, you should be washing your hands with warm soap and water. Um, that will help greatly reduce the germs on your hands and also, um, you know, reduce the amount of spread uh, of any germs that you may particularly have. With washing your hands, it's also important to not touch your face, right? And I'm doing that right now because my nose itches. But we touch our face on a consistent basis, but just to be mindful of that is important. Go ahead, if you touch your nose, if you touch your mouth, go ahead and wash your hands, maybe wash your mouth off, don't lick your lips. Um, and that way that will also help reduce the spread of any germs or viruses that you may have. Once you're also doing the hand hygiene, practicing good hand hygiene, practice good respiratory hygiene. And what do I mean by respiratory hygiene? If you're coughing, <laughs> cough into your arm. If you're sneezing, Sneeze into your arm, right? That is good respiratory hygiene. Do not sneeze into your hands or cough into your hands. If you do that, then go practice that good hand hygiene because that is important in helping to reduce any spread of any type of germs or viruses that you may be carrying. And it may not even necessarily be coronavirus. It may just be like the common cold, but practicing those good respiratory and hand hygiene is important. So something else that you and uh, just really the masses can do, anyone, and this is like if you're at home with your family, if you're on the job, um, if you're at school, is just actively disinfect those high traffic areas. So if you're on a computer, wipe down the keyboard, the, your, the phone, um, your phone, your cell phone, we know that our cell phone has like a tons of bacteria um, on it. So wipe that down, uh, wipe down the doors that people are coming 
in out of and pens and pencils that people are constantly using several different people um, and especially if you see somebody that has been sneezing like I know like my little daughters in pre-k there's always somebody with a runny nose or a cough if we're seeing like hey they're sneezing and then they're going to go touch a, a toy then again wipe down that toy actively disinfect and something else that we can all do is to just keep our immune system boosted, right? So like I previously stated, it took about 20 months for uh, there to be a vaccine that was actually produced in the amounts and capable of uh, you know, combating the SARS that we saw that outbreak in the early 2000s. And so it takes time for vaccines to be produced for for viruses. And therefore, it's important for us to do our part. And by that, I mean, like, help boost your own immune system. So go out there and exercise, you know, eat great food, like eat food that will help boost your immune system, like dark leafy greens and, you know, your citrus fruits and, you know, keep drinking lots of water and take your vitamins, but do the things that you can do to help boost your immune system. Because if God forbid you were to come in contact with somebody that actually has coronavirus, then your body will be strong enough. Your immune system will be strong enough, uh, you know, hopefully to help combat uh, the virus as it is replicating in your body. But those are the things that we should do. Not panic, not be afraid, be calm, go about living your life, but do so cautiously. There is a healthy amount of fear that is absolutely needed, but when that fear turns into panic and that panic turns into hysteria and we're out here doing foolish, crazy criminal things, that's when we have to draw the line and move forward, right? If you have any questions for me, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, if you have any sites that you know of as well, leave those as well for the subscribers out there so that they can stay informed. Follow me on Instagram, like this video if you like it, and uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye, stay safe.